The entertainment industry looked a lot different in the 1950s. Names like Lucille Ball, Jack Benny, and Red Skelton were household names, not because of social media, but by way of families sitting and watching their favorite programs together. Not just watching, though, but listening. Though he wouldn't hit the national airwaves until 1955, a son of North Dakota went on the air in California in 1951 with what would become known as his champagne music. That music and the man leading it would eventually capture the eyes and ears of the nation, not to mention its feet. Although now only seen in reruns, 70 years later, we'll speak with those who knew Lawrence Welk best to find out why he's still seen on television, which fans consider wonderful. Thank you, boys and girls, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That signature accent, the way he swung his baton, and of course, the sounds and steps of his brightly outfitted musical family. For these reasons and more, once upon a time, the studio audience and now the home audience continued to tap their toes watching The Lawrence Welk Show. But before being seen in millions of homes across the nation, Lawrence Welk could be seen here with his family at his home in Strasbourg. In 1903, Lawrence Welk was born to German parents who came from Russia. He would leave the fourth grade and work full time on the farm and didn't learn to speak English until he was 21. Growing up, Lawrence decided he wanted to become a musician and asked his father to buy him the instrument he would play for the rest of his life. But I wanted a good accordion because the reeds kept breaking on those cheap accordions mm -hmm. all the time. And I told my father if he would buy me the real good accordion, the best accordion that's available, I would stay on the farm until I was 21 years of age. And I waited for four years for that day to come up. <laughs> he would then begin working to make a name for himself as a future Welk Show star explains. For years and years, he was a territorial band. He would go right down the center of America back in the 30s and 40s and 50s and found out what people liked and their reflection of, 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 of what they were, they were interested in. They were interested in the sound of his champagne music. And in 1951, Lawrence Welk appeared on a local California television station, KTLA and would become a hit. But despite gaining attention and eventually debuting on nationwide television in 1955, Lawrence would never forget his North Dakota roots. We love the people that we get from here, and I have hopes that in the future, if we continue our show, if we will be so lucky, that we can always include a few people from North Dakota. This is still where they have the best people. He came out and he wanted to walk and walk everything. He wanted to see everything. And, and One yes. thing I remember, he'd make it a point when he came out here, he'd climb the steps to the upstairs. That's where the bedroom was. <laughs> Helping to preserve those stairs and the entire Welk homestead is the State Historical Society of North Dakota. We and Pioneer Heritage before us have put in a lot of work right. to try to maintain it as close to about 1924 as we can. Aside from the house, there are some other things original to the site, like the outhouse. And somewhat original is the barn. While the site supervisor says it's important to maintain this property, he says it also reflects the qualities of families like the Welks and so many others. I think he really stresses how North Dakota views the world and we are true. We don't tell you false stuff. We show you what you're going to get. We aren't going to dance around the subject. You're going to get what we want and that is the ethics, that's the morals, that's religious. We are who we are and I think he really brought that throughout his show. Welk's nieces say he tried to return home as much as he could and show his gratitude to his home state. On this return home in June 1958, he made it a point to bring some family and friends with him, including his son, Lawrence Welk Jr., and Irish tenor, Joe Feeney. Well, Joe is Irish, and he wanted to know if, if you'd be willing to listen to an Irish song in this community. <laughs> I, I would say that we'll listen to an Irish song. I fear if you can sing in German, you'll go over better. <laughs>
But Lawrence Welk couldn't stay for long. He'd have to get back to his show and entertain the nation. Tomorrow night, we'll hear from some Lawrence Welk Show stars, including Bobby Burgess and Kathy Lennon, among others, on why they believe Lawrence Welk's legacy continues to live on. If you ask anyone who's seen Lawrence Welk on television what they remember most, you're sure to get a variety of answers. But for those who knew and worked for Lawrence Welk, the memories are a bit more vivid. Tonight, in the second and final part of our series, you'll meet and hear from those who became a part of the Lawrence Welk family and television history. Goodbye, my the Lennon sisters are a part of that history. They auditioned for Lawrence Welk at his home. And as we walked through the gates and opened the door, Mrs. Welk was there. And uh, Mr. Mr. Welk came out, and he indeed was sick. He had on a maroon satin smoking jacket and velvet slippers, and he was like out of a movie somewhere. And he came, sat down on the couch, looked at us and said, sing, just like that. And I was like, so we went over, hit the piano on the, you know, key on the piano, and we sang, he can turn the tide and calm the angry sea, which was popular by the McGuire sisters. And uh, he said, wow, my son was right. Would you be on my Christmas show? Would rock me in the cradle. And that was Christmas Eve, 1955. And we were on every Saturday night after that for 13 years. Bobby Burgess, one of the original Mouseketeers, would join the Lawrence Welk Show as a dancer in 1961. Burgess would have three dance partners throughout his years on the show. Barbara Boylan, Sissy King, and Elaine Baldwin. And they were all great in their own way, and they all specialized in certain things. And when they came to my, me as a partner, they helped me grow because I would teach them my things, and then they would bring in their new steps and all. So we created new things each time. And now, after years of dancing into hearts, Burgess says he's finally able to sit back and enjoy his work. I just love to watch the show now because I was so focused on my dance routines that I never really got to sit down and enjoy it. Now, I, I, I turn on the, the reruns and uh, enjoy Norma Zimmer or Guy and Rolna. If I were a carpenter. Burgess is referring to the first then husband and wife duo to perform on the show. At first, it was only Rolna. But not for long. I went to everybody. I went to the musical director, George Cates. No, we don't have husbands and wives. Only the children on the Christmas show. No husbands and wives. So I came home dejected, and I, I told Guy, and I said, you know what? Let's go down tomorrow. We're going to be doing the show, recording it on, on Tuesday. And during the day, and, and you bring your guitar, and let's sing Little Toy Trains for Lawrence. It was the ultimate Christmas gift for the couple. English says after the Christmas show performance, they received more fan mail than Lawrence Welk himself. We were on the show together then. For I was on for 13. We were on for 12 together. Another singer put on the spot was Mary Lou Metzger. At the time, she was performing in Arthur Godfrey's All-American College Show. And he handed me a microphone and said, sing something. So with no accompaniment or anything, I sang How Are Things in Glockamora, which was the song I was doing on the college show that week. And after the show, he invited me back to his dressing room. And I was sure I was going to get um, an autographed picture to take home to my parents. I thought that would thrill them. And instead, he invited me down to the Palladium to sing with the band that Saturday night. And uh, my mom flew out for that one. <laughs> Hello, I'm Mary Lou Metzger. Welcome to the Lawrence Welk Show. The Mary Lou and other former Welk stars can now be seen introducing shows from years ago. And although a new show hasn't been taped since 1982, there's a reason why those I spoke with say Lawrence Welk and his show still are popular to this day. It was all beautiful music, beautiful sets, beautiful costumes. And if you didn't like something, wait a second, maybe you'll like this. It was like entertainment. We still have something to maybe make people feel happy for a while. He knew what, what his audience liked. That's why he was so successful, and he played to that strength. I think it brings back that sense of what we're all longing for and what we can create if we make that choice. I can't think of a 
a person that was more humble and more compassionate than he was. Compassionate, humble, a talented musician, and North Dakota native. All words personified in Lawrence Welk, whose wish can still be heard to this day. Now, to all you folks, keep a song in your heart. See you next week. I'll be the same. Good night. Lawrence Welk left us in May 1992, but he and all of your favorite Lawrence Welk Show stars are still seen and heard on television stations all over the country. For example, he could be seen here locally on Prairie Public. In addition to the people you've heard from, I need to thank Mr. Larry Welk, Margaret Heron Letterman, Susie Dowdy, Bob Allen, Jeff Morava, and Lowe's, Troy Davis, Michael Miller, and our friends at Nextstar Affiliate, KTLA. I hope this story brought back a pleasant memory or two and a smile to your face.